What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Zoo on LATV. We have an amazing show for you. We're chatting with Carlos Arechia from SWAT, and Humberto is chatting with Danny Trejo. Don't go anywhere. The show is about to start. We are on the zoo. We're coming in hot. We're coming in hot. We got Nikki Paris and AK-47 on the show. AK is acting like I've done this before. I'm a veteran at this point. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you don't have that. I'm just kidding. You mean it. You own it. Is your name really AK-47? How dangerous. Yes. I love it. Ooh. Anna Karen Lopez. By the way, emphasis messing. on the Karen. Karen. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. Controversial time. <laughs> Change it. <laughs> no, but she, Change it. She has Anna in the front, so it, it yeah, works. Yeah, it's the one word. She's Anna like, Karen. it's Karen, but I pronounce it Carrie. Yeah. Just to be safe. Carrie? Yeah. Anna Carrie. That's fine. Uh, guys, I want to talk about dating life with you. Yeah. All right. So how how is dating in the age of COVID? Well, at first I broke quarantine okay. to hook up with somebody. Oh! Okay. So every time I coughed, I was like COVID or hepatitis. Oh wow. It was it was scary. Um, and I'm not seeing that person anymore. Uh, nothing to do with COVID, mostly because he didn't like to wear a deodorant. <laughs> Anna Karen, you date Mexican guys, right? No, my dating life is non-existent at the moment. Okay, but before we get to non-existent, you, you date what? You look like a white guy dater with a few people from your own uh, culture in between. <laughs> you know what? That's an interesting, like, what is my type? I don't think I have a type. They, but what has been your history is what I'm Oh, asking. my history. Yeah, they're Latino. Latino. Uh, but, but you, I have you, this thing where, like, I want to talk Spanish to them. But you had a white guy. No. Never been with a white guy? No. Okay. She um, likes seasoning. Well, yeah. Thank you. Yes. yes. Okay, so Annika, what was that? Okay, so because okay, so you're used to guys wearing at least cologne. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they smell good. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I, I come from a Latin background. Not only <laughs> visual, you know, it's but a have lot, you been yeah. to like hippie festivals and stuff where like the guys aren't wearing deodorant? Yeah. What it can be a lot. That? You know, it's it like, can. Dude. Yeah. It's like, man, I didn't realize white people can smell so bad. <laughs> but like at a festival, you know, you're sweating, you're underneath the sun, the molly just kicked in. Yeah. <laughs> you have an excuse to, but to it's think like, a But some bit. of the guys is like, don't you know it? Like, I know it. Like, look, there's been times where maybe I forgot to put on deodorant, but I'm aware. And I'm like, oh, man, let me just, you know, let me put on a T-shirt. Or like, I, you know, do they not realize that they have like a cloud around them? Yeah. These hippie guys. Some people think it's sexy. It's a well, the, the hippie people think it's pheromone stuff. Why is your dating life non-existent? I don't know. I just I'm I'm doing good. I'm doing me. You Are know? you blaming COVID? <laughs> huh? Are you blaming COVID or is Maybe. like a, is it also coinciding with a phase in your life where like eh, no dating right now? Yeah, it's a little bit of everything to be honest. Um, I don't know. I figured with me actually. So my Venus is an Aquarius. Do you know what that means? I'm a little unconventional. <laughs> is what it is. So it's just like I have to like. <laughs> totally. I mean, you know what I just realized? Those shoes do not match that jacket. Yes, they do. No, they do not. I am all 80s right Those now. Those are like 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 kinky BDSM <laughs> boots, and you got like a, a jumpsuit, like hip hop, you know what, tennis jacket. The outfit 1991. does not wear me. I wear the That's outfit. Right. The top does like, you say. You either gotta be wearing sneakers, like cool, like she limited looks hot. sneakers, I watch, she or like some great. leather I mean, jacket on the top. When I'm not on you know, the was, camera. <laughs> you look beautiful, but I will say the top says athletic, the bottom says I might whip you. Yes. <laughs> So I what, like, like it. You, fresh. You, you, Thank no, you. No, she has in her room, in her dressing room right now, there is a leather jacket <gasps> and some like Nike sneakers. And I will rock That them. you completely <laughs> switched off. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Like, you should be. I had my oh, and you're wondering why you're single. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so no dating, no dating, Anna Karen. I know, this is. <laughs> That's the glue. No, just kidding. Um, no, I'm not dating. No, I'm not dating. I figured because it's like. I don't know, it kind of stresses me out to date a little bit. I feel like um, I've had the closest relationships, situationships, whatever, mm -hmm. when it's like someone I know. So we've been friends for a while. Otherwise, I feel that pressure like, oh, when are you trying to like, you know, just hook up? Situations. Like, when are, yeah, situations. You're not a one night stand kind of girl. No. Has that ever happened before? <laughs> <laughs> mom and dad are watching. Are you kidding me? This is my first yeah, hosting gig. My mom, mom and dad, dad are watching this, watch this show, She's like, man. I've never even seen myself <laughs> nude. <laughs> no, that's a lie. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I'm just all about exploration at this point. It's hard now because like, I feel like you can't go out and date people, so now you have to do the whole FaceTime thing. And mm -hmm. I'm one of those people, I have three chins on FaceTime. So I don't want people to see me in the first light on FaceTime. You know, I like yeah. to, usually dark at night where it's yeah. hard to see me <laughs> underneath Nikki, the but tree. But you know what? You I love great. FaceTiming. I hate you texting. You do. I hate FaceTime. I hate texting. I'm the type of person that will FaceTime you like out of nowhere. And like, I'm the type of person that will not pick up. I'm like, <laughs> the audacity of this person to not only be calling me, because I feel that a call is in trouble. Like, if you call me, intrusive? I'm like, what do you want? How is that intrusive? It's pressure. I feel pressure when somebody FaceTimes me. I'm like, uh-oh. 
hold on, let me put away my, you know, tater tot titties. It's a lot. <laughs> tater tot titties. It, it's stressful. <laughs> but okay, so what do we feel about FaceTime sex? Because that's, that's a big thing sex. right now. I've never heard of that. That's basically, You've never... no. That's basically like, okay, you pretend to be like doing something like a porn and then I'll be on this set because you know, come on, sex needs contact. All right. Right. You, I have gone on a couple of Zoom dates or FaceTime dates. And they, they were blind dates. And they was like, it was so weird. What do you talk about? Where are you from? What do you do? That's what I'm saying. Are you spiritual? Boring. What did you do before this? <laughs> what were you doing right before this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> Where were you? Were you sitting down? Where are you right now? <laughs> are you wearing deodorant? <laughs> are you wearing deodorant? Because I'm not. I'm pretending to. I'm right. pretending like I'm wearing deodorant. Wait, but you understand how boring that is? Like, that's what I'm saying. It's not existing because I don't want to sit there and just be like, oh, what did you do today? Oh, nothing. Right, because we're all indoors. Like, right. but, have you, you, but there are, I mean, but here's the thing. Like, cer certain things are still opening up even though things are closing back down. Have you, got, have you seen, like, a guy outside, you know, where, like, in person that's kind of like a date, you know? Mm, no. Like right now, we could say we're, we're on a threesome date right now. Yeah, you know what? I would right. like to consider it. That, that's all I'm considering is. That's why I'm here today. Okay, but if, okay, if we're on a date, then we're going to have to pull a switcheroo. I want you in the middle of the night. Okay, fine. I get it. That's usually what people say to me. So. <laughs> Nikki, no! you get on the other side. It's either that or put your shirt back on. And I'm just, no. I'm happy. Listen, you look blush. svelte. You look in Thank shape. You, you look amazing. I threw up before I got out here. Thank you. The COVID has actually been good to you. Not, the, not, not getting the COVID. I'm talking about the quarantine. The quarantine right. has been good to you. You've been working out at home. Yeah. You know, it's, it's hard being alone. You know, I live alone in a studio apartment. Mm. And it's still so many personalities in the room. Oh, my God. So it's people. been hard. Okay, uh, we have one minute left. And, and Wait, no, but I want to know. So did you find those Zoom dates successful? Like, did no. you want a second date? Was there a date? second? No, yeah. No. There was a second date for one. We went on a social distance walk. Wait, what? So we had, we had a blind date on Zoom. This is like a month and a half ago, or like in the beginning. And then we're like, well, let's, do you want to meet in person? We can go out for a hike and just keep, you know. Okay, and cute. so we walked sure. a few feet apart. Um, she was cool. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> you strike me as somebody who's a real ham on camera. Now, when you go on a Zoom oh, date, do yeah. you put up the ring light? Is the lighting right, or are you just right. natural? Nikki, here's the thing, because you know that, you know that I'm, a, I'm a little bit of a mixed bag. Like, you think one thing when you first get to know me, but like, for instance, I might seem like really social on camera, and I can be, but you also know me to like disappear and not talk to anybody, okay? So, uh, yes, I do, I, I have like a little orange light that I feel is, but do you really <laughs> look, do you really think I'm the kind of person that whips out the, the ring light for anything other than homemade porn. That's how I want you to be. So sorry. I'm this just is the idea of me. When I think you. of you, that's how I imagine yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't like white light. I'm racist that way. I like orange light, but not Trump orange. Yeah. It's more like right. brown orange. Right. Uh, guys, we're gonna continue this conversation on the zoo, and later on in the show, I talked to Danny Trejo, bro. All right. So our guy, I guess he's your stage manager, Robbie, over there. He's getting me into sports betting because he's only lost like half of his savings on sports betting, so he wants to get someone else into it. What site? Do you, is it Bovado? What site? Yeah, he does Bovado, mm -hmm. but Bovado. they, they would only my, do Do you know Lisa Ann, the porn star? She's <laughs> one of my best friends. She has a whole, that's how I know about, about this. That's the only reason, reference point I know. But yeah, it's a really big thing. I see all the men. Wait, you're friends, you're friends with, why she, does a porn star have, have sports she's betting? She's one of, so she, she played she's uh, a, Nail and Palin. So she's a sponsor. Well, now she's a sports broadcaster on Sirius XM. And she had, yes, yeah, she's a, a brand rep for Bovado. And she's like that. Can we have her on the it. show? Oh, I would love that. Oh, she has a new book too. coming out. About so what? It's called The Life. <laughs> but she played Nail and Palin. She was in the Eminem music oh, video. Wow. She's like one of the top. She's like the she top. She was in the milf. Eminem video. Yes. That's her. With the Eminems? She wanted to be the first girl I had sex with, and I couldn't do it because I'm very emotional. You need that She's attachment. <laughs> uh, Anna Karen, uh, so let's talk about your living situation. Yes. Yeah. What's your living situation? Um, I live in a house. My uh, housemates, best friends from college, um, it's, three of them are gay. I'm the one straight. We have two dogs. They're kind of gay for each other, so we like to think it's like, what, five gays and one straight? Uh, Happy pride. <laughs> huh? Happy Pride. Yeah, definitely. So it's always like a celebration in my house, and I just love it. Like, I go home every day, and it's like a, everything is a big show. Or like every Friday night, oh, my, um, one of my housemates does really great makeup, and they did drag on me uh, because we watch Drag Race every Friday. And Wait, it's like. You did drag, that means you became a guy. No, like they did drag makeup okay. on me, so it's like the exa like exaggerated, like. Drag look. woman. Because there's drag king, drag queen makeup. Oh, yeah, drag, drag queen, queens. drag queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Don't make me educate you. Like <laughs> right? I was like, okay, you better. Wait, I have to ask. So you have three gay guys in your house. Yes. One bathroom. 
Yeah. How is one that? Bathroom? One oh. bathroom. A lot of fights, I bet. It wouldn't be LA if you didn't have an uncomfortable living situation. <laughs> Does anybody like have like a hole dug up in the in the in the backyard just in case? No, <laughs> no. So I'll tell you, I'm very type A, so I know to do my things really early on or like the night before. Yeah. It's an open. So basically, the bathroom door is always open. There's yeah, no people in it, yeah. but you guys just Unless keep the door people, open. you know, are taking you know a squat like number two kind of thing. Right. Number like two privacy. gets to me. It, privacy. Because, I mean, when I, God, I, just, I don't, I don't want to get into it. What about your number two? <laughs> Andres in the back will be like, "Don't go there." I, I have opinions about number two, but I'm not gonna go there today. Do you use the squatty potty? No, but I gotta get one. Yeah, they're I know good. Bruno has one. I'm gonna ask if he has a spare one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Perfect. Well, you should ask him to try that out. <laughs> Borrow his for a weekend. I honestly wish that we had Metamucil as a sponsor on this show. Because I'm a fan. Yeah, you okay. are. Let's go, let's 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 side shift. I know the control room is going crazy right now, so we're gonna side shift it to something a little less crazy. Um, talk to us about what are you what have you been what have you been doing mm. to prepare yourself for a long-term relationship? Because I know you want a long-term relationship. Yeah. With the right person. You oh, know. so you're like actively looking for a life. Yeah, but what I'm looking for, I'm like, oh God, I'm better off alone. So, you know, it, I'm hard to be with. But the thing is, the thing is, you have a fantasy, like a, your sexual fantasy and your romantic partner are sometimes two different people. Yeah. Well, I'm not good in bed. I do. Nikki. I just lay there. I just, I don't, they have to check my pulse. They call that a what? A dead fish. Yeah. Oh, that, oh I don't even want to move. Yes. Like, why not? And because once, once, why? Because you're in your head about it. No, Let I'm go. lazy. Oh, I'm you're lazy. So one time a guy said to me, get on top. I said, if I get up, I'm leaving. So <laughs> I'm going the home. The one time I get up, it's because I'm leaving. <laughs> so you tell me. Do so I I'm get very, up now? You know, and I'm a sweater. I'm a sweater too. So my hair. That's why, honestly, you know, that's why, like, because if, I, if I'm on top, I got to do on top in the beginning before I start sweating profusely. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then I move to the bottom, so I'm just sweating on myself. Yeah, it's not good. I, and I like girls that sweat. Sometimes I've been with girls, that, that she'd be like, okay, I sweat a lot. I'm like, perfect. Yeah, guys like that. <laughs> I, well, because it's less pressure on me to like not be sweating, you know? Right. Like, by the way, I, because, of, because of COVID, we don't have our makeup artist. Am I shiny? No, you look beautiful. You know what it is? Because I'm like, the pressure's off from not having makeup. Right. That I'm actually like, not because sometimes I have like the makeup on, I'm like, oh, I hope I don't bead the powder. Right. A little you know? patch. No, I'm natural. I'm busted today, and I don't care. This is what I look like, and I'm sorry you had to see it. Can we? I want to practice. I just am such a non sequitur. Like, my, my middle name should be non sequitur. Can we just practice a little, hey, I want to start going, look, one to the left, or like a half. So it's going to be like this, half and go. Ready? Half and go, but at the same time. Ready? One. No, Nikki, stop. Ready? <laughs> Para donde? One, two, three. Half and go. Half and go. We're so not in sync. One, two, three. No, I was not in sync right there. <sighs> I'm going to keep going. You can feel free to join me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, just get the camera on Anna Karen. Just let's see. Go, Anna Karen. Let's see you do it. Hey, no, do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this? It? Yeah. You're, okay, you're kind of spazzing on the half. Look, put it it's on. It's a this. half. Okay. So it's one, two. I'm like, first of all, I was in cheer, Umberto. <laughs> Ready? Let's go. And cheer. I got B. And cheer. And Wait, cheer. Wait, okay, so you guys actually, like, this is an interesting conversation. Like, you know how you want the night to go, so you will be like, I have to be on top first. I can't be there after. If I'm with a partner who is very communicative, and I, as you'll see, like, the kind of women I hang out with, you know, we've had some of my friends on shows. They do stuff, you know. They're very, I am around communicative people. Okay. So it's easy to talk things out. Uh -huh. You know, so it's easy to kind of just be like, you know, what, what, what are the boundaries and what are you into and what, you know, and then I can just be honest and say, I'm going to, if we really go at it, I'm going to start sweating profusely at some time. So why don't I start on top and then we'll Wait, so it's like performance and security a thing? Performance insecurity. Yeah, or like. Of course. Of course. But, but even I... for you, I mean, don't you think, like, when you come out in those dominatrix shoes and you're like, oh, my God, do I, I hope I get this down <laughs> no, right. No, but I don't go what into it. What am I supposed it. to say? I don't go into what it am like, I supposed like to oh, do? I'm freaking out. You know, it's so like, where the night goes? So you're never insecure about sex? No. You're just the coolest. Because if you're vibing you're, with someone, you're vibing, you're you know? Just the cool, you're just the coolest person You've never caught a glimpse of yourself in a mirror and be like, oh, my oh, God. She's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I like to think I'm beautiful too in the right lighting. And sometimes I take a look in the mirror and I'm like, who is that? I gotta say the lighting is very important. When yes. It comes to sex. Mm -hmm. I am. I will say this. I'm a prepared. Wait, do you like look for lighting when you enter? The no, room like then? in my house, I'm like, okay, this light. I have a thing that I put Stop, over the light to get the perfect dim. Oh yeah, I got. I want just enough light. I don't. I'm yeah. not a dark. Per I don't want a dark room. Okay. I want just enough, but I can't be bright light. On that note. <laughs> That's crazy. I think that we have before Danny Trejo. Uh, my little cheat sheet, everybody. It's COVID. Give me some leeway. I have a cheat sheet. Yes. 
after we return from the break, I'm going to be talking to my pal, okay? And we're going to have a conversation, me and Danny Trejo, one-on-one about his new documentary. And I got some business ideas for him. Check this out after we come back from the break on the Zoom. We are back on the zoo, and I got, I got some homeboys in my life, okay? Um, I, you know, I actually got to meet Danny Tiro throughout the years, but I got to talk to him. There's an amazing documentary that just came out called Inmate Number One. It's about when he went into jail, and he really reformed his life, because before that, he was, you know, a criminal, and he was a gangster, a real one, and not a make-believe rapper one. Uh, but he came out, the documentary's amazing, and when he came out, he kind of fell into Hollywood by accident. And now he's a huge business mogul. You know, Trejo's Tacos is doing amazing. The donut right? shop, too. Right, the donut shop. <laughs> Love the donuts. The donut shop. And so, um, you know, I, I, we talked over Zoom because of COVID. But I got to talk to him not only about his life, but I got to give him a few um, uh, suggestions about his next business. So hopefully he started, and then I can ask for half. Or I gotta give, <laughs> then I got to give half to Andres Palencia, director, because he actually gave me the idea to do this. But I'll take credit for it. Check this out. It's Danny Trejo here on the Zoo. Mr. Trejo, come on now. Love, yeah, yeah, gracias. Thank you so much. Man, I, I love the documentary, and, and I've, I've, you know, I've interviewed you a couple times over the years, and I know a lot about your story, but um, seeing the documentary was inspiring, motivating. What, what do you think are the most important parts of your story that people should be taking away from it? Well, you, you know, when I was doing it, the one thing I wanted to do was make sure that when somebody in juvenile hall and somebody in high school and somebody in prison, it, 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 they, just, they just see hope. They just have some hope. That's it. That's all. And I showed it uh, Mario Castillo, my, uh, my sister, and somebody that I met in San Quentin when I was doing Blood In, Blood Out. And when he got out, we, we uh, came to work for me. We, uh, he works with the lifers that are all coming out of the prison right now. And uh, we showed it to him and they said, good, there's hope, that's it, hope. And that's, that was, that's the message that I want to give. I realize you're one of the happiest people in the entertainment industry. <laughs> Did you have this happiness back when you were a young man? You know, I, 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 did you have it? Or, or was that something that you discovered as you, you know, came into this new life? You know what, I think I used uh, humor as a tool, you know, because you gotta, you, you, you've gotta have a sense of humor in prison or you go crazy, you know what I mean? And, uh, but I think uh, the joy that I feel now uh, in helping people and in, uh, in working to make a better life for the people around me, I think that that's the that's the happiness. You know, I, everybody talks about success. Success is being able to wake up in the morning and and loving the day. You know, what I mean, success is going to bed at night feeling good. You know, I remember. Th I don't know if this was before Machete, but around 2010, 11, or maybe it was like 12. I went down to Kid Frost um, studio out in East LA. Your son was there. Uh, I was hanging out with Gilbert, and you showed up. You're just walking through the streets of the neighborhood, you know, like, and <laughs> everyone's coming up. Everyone's coming up to you. You're grabbing, you know, some ice cream from the ice cream man. I, you can't do that anymore, right? Or do you still go to the old neighborhood and walk around? I still do it. I still do it. I just, you know what? Every morning I ask God, let me sign every autograph. Let me take every picture. Because what a blessing it is to be able to just make somebody's day. You know, just to give somebody some joy. It's like awesome. It is just like such a great feeling. You, you become a, a, a character actor over the years as, as the, the epitome of a tough guy, right? But do you think that, and, and part of that is that in your real life, we saw how you had to deal with your emotions. You had to deal with them by pushing them to the side and being really strong and being really hard. Do you think that acting helped you get back into your emotions? Let, let me tell you something. My son directed me into a movie. He directed me a, into a, in a movie called From a Son. Look it up, but, but, uh, but, uh, but in this movie, I had to cry. You know, and I, and I, don't, I don't cry, I never showed that kind of emotion. You know what I mean? Men don't cry and, and uh, 
But all day he kept talking about when he was a baby and when he was a baby and this. Remember when I did this? Remember when I had, you know, it was so funny because I remember one time uh, he had the chicken pox and he had one little chicken pox right here. And I said, don't scratch that or you'll get a scar. And he went like this, you know, like, and he's got a little scar right there. So and he showed me that and we like laughed. And then, but then when it came time to do this scene, we're in the desert, it's cold. And I'm, I'm with his girlfriend uh, in the movie and, and he's, he died and we're looking for his body. And, and we started talking and when I started crying, I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. He softened me up and he hit the, all the spots. And I, I, when, when he said cut, I looked around, all the crew was crying. I mean, it's like everybody that was crying. And so he's a brilliant director. I, and if I got to, I'll put him up against anybody. You know what I mean? And, and he, did, he, did, he did a movie with no budget. You know what I mean? Had, had me a motor home, had the, the girl lead a trailer. And <laughs> you know, so. He was just, he did great. That's awesome. Danny, you know, you had a very challenging life. We see a lot of that in the documentary. But let's just say we go back to the beginning of your life. We pluck you out of Pacoima. You never go to St. Quentin. We put you in some Brady Bunch household in Beverly Hills, and that's how you grow up, okay? You go to school. You do everything correctly from the get-go. Do we have the Danny Trejo that we see and are inspired by today? I, I don't think so. I think, I think my life... <clears throat> Uh, had a lot to do with who I am now. You know, I mean, when I was, in 1968, when I went to the whole, me and Ray Pacheco, Henry Quijada had started a bit, uh, 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 a riot that, uh, that really hurt some people. And so when we were in the whole, it was like, you know, they, they even my father, they were gonna put me in a gas chamber. And, and I, I, uh, I remember saying, Diosito, if you, if you uh, let me die with dignity, not I didn't want to think I was going to get out. Just let me die with dignity, and 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 I'll say your name every day, and I'll I'll do whatever I can for my fellow man till I die. But I thought it was just going to be a couple of years, and and then they're going to kill me. But you'll see the fool me. Okay, I'm going to give you the rest of your life. And so I owe. This is one of the reasons that I. I do try to do so much because I oh, and I even asked God a couple of days ago, Yosito, how am I doing? You're almost out of hell, Danny. You keep it up. You keep helping because that's when we pass out food. We do everything we can for our fellow man and everybody that I know. You know, everybody that I choose to call my friends, they do the same thing. When we come back, we're talking to Gina Briong about her new comedy special. Keep it locked right here on the Zoom. We are back on the Zoom. I got my Zoopals over here. Nikki Paris, AK-47 That's Lopez, so the mixy matchy. Yep. <laughs> I'm a Zoopal now. <laughs> That's what my new name is. I'm I love only that. Yeah, me as a I have never heard of that. Ronnie, why, like, <laughs> why do you come up with these things right? Why? <laughs> we found her in the hallway, by the way. Yeah. Really? And I'm just like, do you want to look? Do you want to host be a host on the show? You're like, ah, oh, totally. I kick it in the hallway, you know, and that's where he found me. <laughs> All the things happen in the hallway. It's, I mean, I, at ITV, you just got to be around at the same time. Right now, we have Auda directing, and if you've met Auda, she's love her. Amazing. By Big the way, fan. if anyone wants to, uh, can we say this out loud? Get married for a visa? Contact us? No? Okay, my bad. Uh, Robbie's giving me the ICSI. I'll do it. Knocks it. I love yes? I think we have a oh great Oh my God, life. perfect. Out of we Aura. found your husband. Yes. Aura, I'm just telling you one oh. position in the bedroom. Aura. That's it. Very prepared. No, no, no. no, you guys don't even have no to do anything. Yeah, it's not even required. Le I'm just... lazy. Less for me to do. By the way, um, <laughs> immigration, this is a joke. We're just joking. Uh, this is not happening. I'm serious. And by the way, <laughs> boo ice. How about that? I-C-E, go boo yourself, right. okay? Um, this land be belonged to the people first. 
I'm gonna, I interviewed Gina Brion. <gasps> Love her. What do, you, what do you know about her? Well, we started together in New York. Well, actually, oh, she was before great. me, but I knew her doing stand-up in New York for many years. And I just saw her a couple months ago before all this COVID stuff happened. And, you know, she has her new special. The right? Floor is Lava, which is, should not, cannot be confused for the Netflix game show right. on at the same time. I don't a know little, if that's going to help her. A little her different. Her. Yeah. And I love her, and she's having a baby. Yeah. So. She's yeah. really cool. She had a bunch of cool things to say, man. She's, she, you know, she wants to open up comedy. She's a strong Latina woman from New York. She also has some things to say about things like cancel culture and all that stuff. So she's, she really has a very centered, balanced uh, view. Girl. Very smart. And uh, I got to talk to her about a bunch of things, including the new special. And you get to see the interview right here. Check it out. Looking forward to your new special. I've seen a, a, a couple of clips. Uh, I saw Easily Offended. Uh, I think it was on HBO's uh, platform. Yes, it was. Awesome. So how do you feel? Is this your first one hour special? This is actually my second one hour special, but um, the first the first one is actually on Amazon too, which was a big moment because they took my first special and put it on Amazon and then they took this special. So it's like almost bookends. Like okay. my most recent special and my very first special are both on Amazon now. So it's kind of it's incredible. All right, well, is it you're, you're hitting it hard. We need to remind, you know, because Jeff Bezos is actually have Cuban, so we got to get him on the on, on the Latinx, you know. Uh, so, he needs to start a little bit more. Help us out as yeah. much as you can, right? Absolutely, Jeff. Come on, hook it up. I know that he just um. Uh, Gloria Calderon just signed a deal with Amazon, so let's hope for more Latinx and Latin-based projects right. to come out of that. And um, there's a couple of things in the works that I'm hoping go through, you know, for Amazon. But big up to Amazon for, you know, for providing that kind of diversity and hopefully, you know, getting more Latin voices out there. Yeah. Okay, so you talk about something in your stand-up that I find, you know, uh, first of all, it's, it's going to be a treasure trove throughout your entire career, and it's being married to a white guy from the Midwest, and I love I love collision of cultures, and what better place to, for that to happen than a marriage? So can you talk to me a little bit about that? Man, it's been a wild ride. <laughs> um, it's been interesting because we come from such very different backgrounds. Like I'm a, you know, I'm a Puerto Rican from the South Bronx, and he is a white guy from the Midwest, and we met on a cruise ship and just kind of fell for each other. Mm -hmm. And we have very different, such different backgrounds. He comes from conservative parents. My parents are super liberal. And so I think that was the biggest question when we first started dating was, are our differences going to be an issue that we can't get over? And what actually ended up happening is that we're learning a lot from each other about each other's cultures, about what it's like to grow up in the Midwest and about what it's like to grow up in the South Bronx. And when we looked at it like that, it became way more fascinating to learn about each other, where it was like, well, how did your family handle this? And how did your family handle this? And it's very interesting. Latinos, we air all our dirty laundry out right at, like, right at the dinner table. Like, it doesn't matter. We will air it out in front of everybody. <laughs> like, but I've noticed that families from the Midwest tend to not talk about their issues, right. which fascinated me. Cause I'm like, you guys just bottle stuff up. And then one day you explode at each other. Whereas Latinos, I feel like we go off on each other all the time. And then by the end of us going off on each other, we're back to loving each other like family again. Right. Well, that's, that's very interesting. So uh, there's, you know, there's always a trade off, you know, because there might be to them, I think, you know, maybe there's a positive not bringing stuff up because you don't yeah. have all these little explosions that happen throughout like a, a, a Latin house but they, they they hold longer grudges like I think if you don't say yes. anything, those things from the past linger for them more often than when, when Latinos we forget the past really quickly because we have it out yeah we'll be like yeah my dad left me in a liquor store for three days but he came back <laughs> like we're like he came back we talked it out we're good now <laughs> like we don't hold on to that stuff but you, you say in your standard that he talks a lot, and I have a theory about white people that like to hang out with Latinos and Latinas, and, and, and uh, it's, it's usually white people that like to talk, and they don't get that from like their community. So they then don't. they find you know someone from our community, and they're like, ah, oh, finally, I get to be chatty. Yeah, and then we're like, you talk too much, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're the ones that are like, bro, you talk too much. <laughs> you, now, being a comedian in the relationship, do you hold that over his head? Like, when he tries to be funny, it's like, hey, look, Blow your roll. I'm a comedian in the household. Don't even try it. Or do you even be like, oh, that's a good one. Sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes, because sometimes he'll try a little too hard and he'll look at me like, huh? 
huh? Was that funny? Huh? And I'm like, no, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> Leave it to the professionals, bro. Maybe, please. Oh, man. All right. One day, though, maybe, maybe maybe one day he comes up with something so funny. You're like, all right, all right, I want to use that. I want to use this. He's had his moments. He's definitely had his moments, but they're like, more natural not when it's it's like with anybody when you're trying to be funny it yeah. usually fails but when it comes naturally like if you're naturally funny and you're telling a funny story or you just are good on the fly and you say funny things like my brother's like that he's so funny just off the top of his head right. when it happens like that like those are the best moments and he's had a couple of those moments mm-hmm. wow how'd you get into comedy oh gosh I fell in love with comedy at like 14 years old. I was flipping through the channels on my parents' cable and I got to uh, Showtime and there was a special on Showtime by a comedian named Brett Butler. And I'm watching this special and I just automatically knew, I was like, I wanna do that for the rest of my life. I have no idea what it is, but I wanna do that. I wanna make people laugh for the rest of my life, just like she's doing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know how to do it, but I'm gonna find out. When we come back, we're hanging out with actor Carlos Arrechea. Keep it locked right here on The Zoo. We are back on The Zoo, and we have a Cuban actor. And because he's Cuban, that means I'm probably related to him. Here's Carlos Arrechea from the new show SWAT. Carlos Arrechea. Yes, sir. Let that tongue roll. <laughs> Let it. Try it. <laughs> I say his last name. Arrechea. Oh, no, I... You, but did you I get did. it? You did. Oh, great. Yes. First time, everybody. Come on. <laughs> Amazing. So you're on the new show SWAT yes. on CBS. You made your primetime debut. Before we get into the show, because he's more of an expert on the show, you got nominated for an Emmy for your episode. Yes, I'm a contender for an Emmy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, contender and nominee is the same thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're using boxing terms. I think yeah. can, no, I think yeah, because politically and candidate because okay. Yeah. So um, you told I just me like that, that word. Contender. Yes, yeah. I like the contender. It's like yeah. a box because we're Cubans, so <laughs> you know we're, we're all boxers at heart, one way or the other. So you're the first Cuban to be nominated since who? Since Andy Garcia. Wow. Yeah, right. and it's been almost 20 years since then. Wow. So yeah, it's. In one way, shape, or form, we're all cousins. You know that all, all Cubans are cousins. Yeah. Then. Say, our, so our, our parents, our grandparents, are cousins. It's a small idea. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about the show. It's a great show. You know, a lot of action and the role, Gio Torres, my role. It's a very heartfelt role, mm-hmm. and it means a lot to me because I was able to represent my birth country, Cuba, on prime time TV. So that was awesome. Um, yeah, you have to see that. You have to watch the episode. You know, I've seen the pieces of the episode, okay. and you're amazing in the okay. pieces. Thank but you. I have to get the entire one. We yes, gotta tell sir. your PR to send me more than just two clips. Yeah, yeah, please come on, <laughs> come on. Because I don't have TiVo. <laughs> but well, he does. The show your wife gets kidnapped. Yeah. And I have to say, if I ever get abducted, I hope that you come and save me. Or I, at least I, you come. I, I, just watching yeah. you. I was watching at my computer. I was ducking. <laughs> like, like, I mean, you really are in great shape. Yeah, and I worked so hard because I never boxed before, so I had to train like crazy for the role. Yeah, it, w- it was a challenge because I, it was a lot of character work. I shaved my head, I gained like 10 pounds. Um, the accent, the voice, everything was very different from, from who I am. That's amazing. Yeah. And so the, where the show takes place in? In LA, in LA. In LA. So okay, yeah. so you, it was all shot here. When, it, you guys obviously shot before COVID, so it was well done. It yeah, done we shot on the last week of December before going okay. to the Christmas break and then first week of 2020. You got it in the can right before yeah. it started. Yes. Right? That's crazy. So, you know, you're on the show, you play a boxer. You know, one of your biggest successes, you were on a Nickelodeon show. Yeah. So how does it go from What's being the, on the, What Nickelodeon show? It's called Grachi. It's a oh. Nickelodeon Latino. I, I did like 151 episodes. We shot that in Miami for almost two years. So, yeah. You're a Libra. No, I'm a Capricorn. God. Oh, me too. <laughs> the, 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 what, what's, um... Christmas Eve. Oh, nice. Yeah, the Janu- nightmare before Christmas. January 17th. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. So how does that work? You know, that, that's such contrast in roles. So how, do you, how did you prepare for this role differently than other ones? I, like I said, I worked so hard. I had a boxing coach with me the whole time. The whole team from SWAT, they were so warming. So I was training like crazy. So, yeah. yeah. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a little a more a sensitive question. Considering yeah. like last month we had a lot of demonstrations, you know, with police reform and all that stuff, is have people attached to the show like gone? Oh man, this show's about cops, and right now the police are are a little bit in, in a controversial position. Mm-hmm. Is there was there worry on people that are attached to the show about how it might do in the ratings? Are people going to want to watch this or not? 
You know, actually, not really. The, the fans from the show, they love the show. And right. it's, you know, the, the lead is Shemar Moore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and they love him. And yeah. no, actually, I haven't heard anything, at least for, uh, at least for now, I haven't heard anything. Because yeah. I've heard, I've heard that they're gonna like now kind of rethink cop shows a little bit. Right. Yeah. But yeah. your show is is more specific to SWAT, SWAT. which is a very very escalated. It's an yeah. escalated yeah. situation yeah. that really is not the same as as as, yeah. as cops on the street. Mm -hmm. If I'm in a situation, yeah. the SWAT team needs to come. I'm not yes. denying them. If it's at that level yeah. of yeah. fear and risk, yeah, I'm like, exactly. do what you got to do. Yeah. Uh, did you learn how to shoot guns? No, no, I don't. I, I you only box. You You're know. the boxer SWAT guy. I'm the boxer. Yeah. But you never yeah. have a gun. No. But is that like? A <laughs> <laughs> Explain to me okay, this, Carlos. Okay, so this, this is the thing. I'm not part of the SWAT team. Okay. Okay? You're the trainer of the SWAT team? No, no, no. I'm a Cuban a world champion ah. um, boxer that comes to the States with his pregnant wife for this fight that could be the fight and of his life. And then the wife gets kidnapped. By the way. With the this, child. Yes. With my child, yeah. But this <laughs> just so that you know, this happens to me every show. <laughs> where I didn't see the whole thing I was supposed to see. You see, he didn't do this his happens. homework. No, I saw the clip. I saw okay. the clip, but for some reason when I saw the clip, I'm like, oh, he's part of the SWAT team and his yeah. wife got, got kidnapped. <laughs> and he also happens to be really good at boxing. Yeah. <laughs> okay? So this happens to me every episode where this is like, God damn you, okay? You have one thing to do, one thing to see, but he saw everything. Yeah, so, yeah, Nikki, yeah. So I'll proceed. be talking just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Forget the Cuban that Maybe your cousin. You yeah. gotta talk to him. Nope. Don't ask about. But we'll talk about Cuba in the next second. But okay, little, so the show's been on for a couple seasons. Um, three seasons. Wow, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you got picked up for a fourth season. It's one of CBS's most highest rated shows. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, have, uh, and and so that that's amazing. So uh, now on set, were there like fake guns around? Did you see any of that? I didn't have to do anything, anything with, guns. with guns. No. Because no. I'm obsessed with like, oh, are they using real guns? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea. No. Nikki, pick me up, help me yeah, out here. Yeah, I will. <laughs> well, I want to know because, you know, I, I've gained about, I don't know, 15 pounds in quarantine. So what was but like the muscle. diet that you have to be like when you're boxing? Because I'm oh, assuming was, it's very lean. I was just eating, well, I, I was eating a lot. I was eating Cuban really? food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your diet like? Because if I ever became a boxer and uh -huh. I had half my top off, I'd be like, well, I guess I'm not eating You know, I, I, I didn't do a diet. I was just eating a lot, to be honest. And, and just working out and boxing a lot. So, yeah, it, it, it was like a balance. And you've never boxed before? No, never, never. Yeah. Well, I know who to call in a fight now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me your number. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. Well, no, one minute. OK, C Eddie, cut that part out. We have an editor who's uh, hilarious. I love him. His name is Eddie Cardenas. Oh, no, wait a minute. They're stopping. <laughs> They're doing that so he cuts that part out. All right, let me know when you're rolling again. So, I, you know, it's funny about boxing training. I've actually done boxing training. Okay. It's actually one of the, I, I, for me, because it, it's working out your shoulders, it's working out your core, all that stuff. Never want to use it on the street, though. Now that you're trained in boxing, as an exercise to get you in shape, but are you also feel like if anything happens, I can protect myself? Like, do you feel like now you have... Oh, like, yeah, I feel more confident now. I'm ready to go. Okay. <laughs> Because you know what, you never know what's gonna happen. You so don't know. mouth off to him yes. if, yeah. you're, if you're watching with an attitude. Yeah, you know I'm, what, I'm a yeah. sweet guy, but you know, just don't. <laughs> it's don't there. Don't go there. It. It's yeah, there. Yeah. But you're also Capricorn. Yeah. You know that Capricorn is attached to Saturn, and you know what Saturn is attached to, right? No. Satan. Oh. oh okay. Capricorn is the goat. Okay. Okay. The goat head. I thought, the, I, thought, I thought that just meant that Capricorn's like to climb the mountain. That too. That too. I didn't realize it was a mountain of evil. It might be. Oh, no. I don't know. I'm only in love and light, you guys. So <laughs> come on. Come on. Light, 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 yes. light, light. All right, we're going to take a break right now. And when we come back, it's more with Carlos Arrechea from the show SWAT on CBS. I might not have seen the entire show, but I know that it's on CBS. I know the name of the show, and I know how to promote it. Watch that after you watch this. We have one more block. We'll be right back. back on the zoo with Carlos Arrechea from SWAT. All right, so we're going to talk about something I do know about, and you're going to know about because you're going to visit Cuba one day. You have been to Miami, which is... Yes, you know, I love Miami. Um, what do you know of Cuban culture? I know about the Cuban cigars. I've actually Ooh. smoked a few. That's nice. one, a personal favorite of mine. Okay. Yes, and I love Miami. And you moved to Miami when you were 12, right? And that's when you didn't know if you were going to be an actor. Well, I started acting 
in Cuba when I was six. But didn't you want to go to college for psychology? Yes. So how does it feel just now? Just to please my parents. <gasps> yeah, just to But you're a them. third generation actor. Yes, sir. Which I think is so interesting because Christmas must be so dramatic. <laughs> What all, I mean, there's a lot of personalities, it sounds like. What is that like? Um, you know, I'm not that connected to, to the family, I guess because they're in Miami, I'm in LA, but my mom lives in Italy, so, yeah. But, I mean, Cubans can get, you know, dramatic. I mean, yes. don't put me in the... <laughs> it's allowed. Which it's, family member yes. is the worst? It's, yeah, they're going to call me when they see this. No, no, let's not. Mira, eh, las navidades con, para, las, uh, para las casas cubanas son bien uh, loud. Oh, very loud. We're so loud and we love to, you know. Yeah. A lot of animation. Yeah. That's why boxing came easy to you. That's oh, why yeah. Cubans are good at boxing. We yeah. their hands. We're already doing this. We're already, We yeah. just gotta go like this now? <laughs> oh, okay. Let me ask you this. Cubans, when you came to the United States and you started, you know, meeting other Latinos from other parts of the country, right? Especially when you came to LA and yeah. you started making friends with Mexican-Americans and Mexicans. Did you notice that Cuban Spanish is different from everyone else's Spanish? So different. So different, you know, we talk like, you know, like we, they say like we talk like we had like a potato in our mouth, yeah. you know, like, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. you know, and, and, and we eat like they are, they as. You know. Well, I didn't know, when I came here to the United States, first of all, I speak better Spanish now. Than, when I go back to Miami, my dad, who I speak Spanish to, and my grandmothers are actually happy. They're like, oh, your Mexican friends did it good because I didn't know that gracia was gracias. Gracias. I, like, I didn't know that all these words that have an S at the end, have an S, because, you yeah. know, we cut off the S. Gracias. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, you know, uh... Como esta? Sí, como esta? Oh, es como estas. Exactly. Really? Yeah. You make it quicker. Yeah. We, that's know, what we do. Like, yeah. Cuban sing songy. We're a sing song because, you know, we're, we're an Afro-Latino. We're mixed with Spanish and African, so we, we, we have a patois. And sí. when you have a patois, what patois does, it basically just, like, is cursive, mm -hmm. but in talking. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, is that another you know, way to do it? But, uh, <laughs> um, I have culture shock when I go back to Miami now. Really? Yeah, because Cuban, Cuban and, and Caribbean culture is so different it's from It's so here. different. It is, it is. By the way, do you know any place that I can get, like, a real, real Cuban okay, coffee? Okay, let's go over the... Oh, Cuban coffee, I don't See. know. Okay, well, because you don't like La Llave uh, coffee. You don't think that that's the real one, the green one. No. You like Bustelo better. Sí. Okay. You can get Bustelo at most uh, uh, Ralph's now. At okay. most of them, right? You can okay. get Bustelo. I, I bought it myself. By the way, these coffees that I'm mentioning should totally be sponsors of the zoo. Yeah. I'm just yeah. saying. I mean, come on. Call Let's us. go. So there's La Llave <laughs> and there's Bustelo, and they just they go by Espresso. What places do you go to? And uh, by the way, all the names that I'm mentioning, these are freebies. You better start sponsoring us. <laughs> Have you been to Portos? Yes. Okay. I love Portos. Yes. I love Portos, but they're, they're kind of. I mean, of, it's they, different. They use La Llave. Si. They use, they si. use La Llave. And you know what I hate when I go there and it says espresso? It's like, put Cuban coffee, because we don't say espresso, we say cafe cubano. O una. una eh, un, Coco, cortadita. Cort, cortadita. Or what is it? What's the other one? Pero ahora se me olvidó. Una, una coladita. Una cola, de, cola, cola. Una colada is una colada, with, with coffee. Exacto. O un cortadito. A cortadito is the little one. It's the little one. And you gotta yeah. take it in shots because the caffeine is so strong. Oh, Have yeah. you ever had Cuban coffee? Yes. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Ooh, fly. <laughs> Yeah. If you need Trust a laxative, me. I almost dropped dead from a heart attack. But I, I when, I first got, <laughs> yeah. When, yeah, when I first got out of college and I was working at, at a newspaper, as you can imagine, I would wait till the last night before my, my deadline, all right? And I would have to stay up, and I, and I wrote for the Miami New Times, I wrote features, so they were long stories. Yeah. I would have to stay up the entire night. Cuban coffee, right. I would stay up the entire night on Cuban coffee. What time would you go to bed? I wouldn't, because I w yeah. I w it would be the night before, next, so I would, yeah. have to, I, I would you know, turn in my story. At nine o'clock the next morning before my editor came into town, uh, came into the office. Wow, wow. That's amazing. But Q, have you been to, so as far as like little, because what, what Cuban food is good at, obviously there's the entrees, but I love the snacks. Las croquetas. Los pastelitos, los pastelitos guayaba. ¿A ti te gusta pastelito de guayaba solo o pastelito de guayaba con queso crema? Pastelito con guayaba con queso crema y de coco. Y de coco y también de coco me gusta. También, sí. A mí me gusta los pastelitos de guayaba solo. Okay. Because I'm a guayaba purist. Oh, I love guayaba también. Look, I love the queso crema, but my grandmother used to love the queso crema. I'm like, no, I just want it just with guayaba. And I like it when it's gooey. I like it, I don't like mm. the flaky. ¿Qué es gooey? Gooey, como tú sabes los pastelitos que son más suaves que cuando... Hay los pastelitos que cuando tú lo tocas, todos los flakes Ajá. se tiran. Sí. Yeah, no, no. Ese, ese es ese. A mí me gusta lo que están... Que, que tú lo puedes partir. Okay. Que son bien gooey. Okay. Tú sabes? Okay. Que, que no se cae, porque la, eh, eh, tiene como un glaze arriba. Got it. Lo que hacen, hay uno que se llama, coño, ¿cómo que se llama? Está en Echo Park. Eh, Gigi's. 
Hay no, never. It's it's so gooey. I mean, it must be a thousand calories. Boy, I, after this, I'm gonna go then. Do it. And then Tell them that you know. And it's and it's Cubans working there. You know how it is? Completely disorganized. Just people screaming at each other. <laughs> Very and, animated. Uh, and the one and the one Mexican is 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 trying to like stay calm and just like, oh god, I shouldn't come work at this Cuban place. <laughs> oh my god. So, uh, is there anything else that you want to tell us about that's coming up uh, uh, in your life? Um, I cannot say it yet. <gasps> stay tuned. Stay a tuned. Tease. Yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned. You're so. the most reserved Cuban I ever met in my life. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna like Cuban. That's you're, you're, he's Cuban light. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Carlos is my middle name. Oh. There's a lot of Carloses and Cubans, so See. I think yeah, there's a lot of Carloses in my life. Humberto Carlos Guida is my name. Carlos, thank you for coming. Thank you come so much back. for Look, having I want, me. I want you to come back after I watch the not only that episode but everything else. That you're, I want to watch all the episodes of the Nickelodeon show that you were. Yes, on. please. Yeah. Okay. And uh, keep holding it down for the Cuban lights, because we need a few more of you. Yes, thank you. Thank All you, right. sir. Thank you for being on the show. And Nikki, you're Love holding you. it down. You're amazing. Love you're you, an honor. Thank you so much. Thank you. If I ever honor get in a fight, I'm calling you. Okay. <laughs> want to thank our other guests, Danny Treo and Gina Brion. We got the whole spectrum of Latinx happening here <laughs> on the zoo, so you better stick it. Uh, look, this, this is what the Cubans do. We swallow our words. <laughs> watch us next time we're on LA TV, which is the same time on the same day that you watched it right now. Peace. <laughs>